who's out there. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's 8 o'clock on Wednesday. Who's out there with me tonight? I'm waiting. So I don't have a lot to talk about, but I always say that, and then all of a sudden I'm talking and talking and talking and I don't shut up. Hey, Betty. Hope you're having a great week. And Lori. Hey, Lori. Lori, I didn't hear back from you. Um, I still have your top to fix. I think you needed to send me some new measurements. Better yet, you should come and visit me if you can. I don't know. It's probably too far for you to drive, but we need to try to get together again soon. Um, hey, Stephanie. Hey, Tina. Tina, I think my crinoline's bigger than you thought it was because in the picture I was standing a little bit sideways. I'll stand up and you can tell me if you still think it's too small. But it's the only size they make that I can find. I mean, you know, at least on Amazon. Uh, hey, Heather. And Teresa. Hey, Teresa. Two Heathers, Heather Stanley and Heather McCollum. So, okay. So I guess there are a few tonight. Um... <laughs> So today I'm doing a rockabilly look. Um, so I decided um, just for fun, hey Tony, um, I'm, I'm playing around with, you know, I'm making vintage clothing. And so to go along with that, I need to do some vintage styling. And I'm not really good at hairstyling. I do my best, but that's why you see me wearing a lot of wigs. But I am trying to learn, since I really want to adopt this as kind of my everyday look, you know, I want, I'm going to make these clothes and I really want to start wearing them, the clothes, the hats, and to really work them into my everyday, not just, you know, playing dress up. Because I do love them and I'm seeing more and more, as you look online, I'm seeing more and more women who do this, who adopt a vintage style and they're very popular. There's a lot of them that you know, teach it to others and, and all this stuff. I've seen the YouTube videos and people have sent me posts. So I decided, you know, I want to try a different look. Yesterday, um, I posted a picture on my Facebook in the morning when I got dressed. Um, I just had to run some errands yesterday, so I knew I was leaving my house. And usually I am a jeans and t-shirts girl. I really am when I'm at home. Um... But I decided uh, I was going out. I needed to run some errands. I needed to mail something and go to the fabric store and what have you. So I decided to um, put on a dress. And the weather was beautiful. This week here in South Carolina, yesterday got into the low 80s. Today got into the 80s. It's really warm. So warm enough to wear a sleeveless dress. So yesterday I put on this yellow and white and black kind of 60s-ish, not psychedelic 60s. It's a little sheath kind of dress, um, but it has a very, you know, columnar, columnar, I guess, I don't know. It's a kind of a sheath dress. Uh, so um, I put that on with some bright yellow heels and I decided to do a pseudo beehive. I did just in the front, a half beehive. I just did the hair up big in the front and left the back down. And it came out all right. It wasn't horrible. It wasn't, it was a little messy. Just like today, and today I was having kind of a bad hair day. So that's what kind of uh, inspired me to do the rockabilly look. Okay, so here's my dress. If for those of you who didn't see my picture that I posted. So every day I'm gonna post a picture with whatever vintage look I happen to be wearing. So this is my head to toe rockabilly look and I just kind of pinned up my ponytail. But I just did a ponytail, curled the bangs, you know, did the bumper bangs. And I am wearing a crinoline. Um, I need to get a bigger one because the, the, the bigger one that I have is kind of flat. I gotta see if there's a YouTube video on how to poof up a crinoline or else I just need to try to make my own. So, ta-da, this is my little rockabilly look. So I thought it was fun. Um, I was also playing around. I didn't do any pictures or anything yet, but this past weekend I was playing around with head scarves because I think head scarves are really cute. And they used to look really adorable how they wore them in the 40s and 50s. So um, a head scarf is a really great way to hide a bad hair day also. So I really want to start adopting those. So 
what I'm going to do every, I'm not saying that I'm going to dress up every single day, but every single day that I do dress up in something vintage or vintage-ish, I'm going to post a picture and uh, just have fun with it. And I started using Instagram again. I had an Instagram account that I never used because it's so hard to keep up with all the social media. I'm not really a Twitter user. I kind of auto post to Twitter, but I, I don't get into conversations. I'm more of a photo. I like sharing photos um, and I like looking at photos. So I guess Instagram probably suits me more, but you know, handling Facebook alone was like as much as I thought, as much as I could manage. But it seems like Facebook doesn't share much of my stuff, so I'm going to try Instagram now. I'll keep posting to, to Facebook too, but I'm going to see if um, I have more luck on Instagram with people actually seeing my stuff. Hi, Diane. Thank you. Let me see if I missed anybody here. Um, yeah, YouTube is great for hair, Heather. Um, I have used it a lot. Whenever I can't figure out how to do something, I go to YouTube. And, but then, you know, with hair, and it's looking a little messy now too, because you know what, I slept on it. <laughs> I was really, really tired um, a couple hours ago. It was right after dinner. I'm like, oh, I need to do my live feed tonight, but I'm so tired. So I just woke up from a nap. <laughs> so my hair's a little messy. I slept on it. Um, so, oh, thank you, Diane. So, yeah, the polka dots. Um, so, I bought some more polka dots, Betty. Um, Joanne's, not that I need any more fabric. Good God, my house is going to explode. But Joanne's had an 80% off sale yesterday. It was Actually, they extended it to today. Um, I got a notice, but I did not go back. Um, so they didn't have a lot for 80%, but they had some clear ounce Casa fabrics and they had some quilting fabrics and quilting, quilting fabrics are cotton prints. So I went to see what they had and I ended up buying maybe at least 10, but, uh, at 80%, it was the quilter showcase, um, prints only which are usually about 13 bucks a yard, which is more expensive. I don't usually buy fabric that's that much. You know, I usually look for fabrics that are under $10 a yard, um, preferably less than that. But at 80%, they were only $1.30 a yard. And, you know, since I'm doing this kind of thing now, in addition to my historical stuff, I didn't have any prints, so I did. I bought about 10 or 12 of them. Um, to make, you know, 50s dresses. Um, I also posted the picture um, earlier today of some beautiful um, crepe back satin that I ordered uh, specifically to do uh, 1905 to 1935, you know, that era, that 30 year era, uh, the beginning of the century. Um, dresses, the slinky, um, the bias cut, some of the flapper dresses, uh, and some of the um, Edwardian dresses, very sleek and drapey. And I didn't have really much at all for drapey fabrics at all. Um, I have a lot of silks that are um, taffeta. I have a lot, a lot, a lot of silk taffeta. I have some brocades. I do have a little bit of satin, but not that crepe back satin has a really nice straight to it. And you can use both sides of it, which is awesome because you can use the same fabric in two different ways in one outfit. So um, it's really good, pretty fabric. And so I picked colors in the uh, real muted tones, but what I thought would be really appropriate for that era. So those came today too. So I'm anxious to start using those, but I'm also working on some commissions. I gotta get caught up on commissions. So I'm, I'm having fun. Um, oh, Tina says my crinoline still needs more poof. Well, I gotta see if I can find a way to make it poof, Tina. I'll have to try YouTube to, to re-poof my crinoline. <laughs> Because I have one, uh, there's a dress behind me that I'm working on that the crinoline needs a lot more poof. But it's a longer crinoline, so I've got to figure out what I need to do to to, to poof it. <laughs> so, um, okay, Diane mentioned, love the dress behind me. Well, I'm getting to that. 
Um, Instagram. Uh, Heather mentions Instagram. Oh, Tina says, isn't restrictive like Facebook is. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to try it. Um, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I had an alarm that went off and my, I, I think my phone froze. So, okay. Um, Diane, how many Christians do I have? Uh, I had a lot before Williamsburg. Yeah, well, I did a lot for Williamsburg and I still have... I probably have eight or ten still, but they're for next, uh, mostly for September. I had a couple of them for book lovers. That's uh, the dress behind me is for book lovers. Um, do I have one more? I did a hat last week. She wanted that for book lovers. So I did a hat for Tabitha Waite last week, a Regency stovepipe on it which I did a video with that. And then I did two dresses for author Lauren Smith. So I guess it's time for me to talk about it since somebody mentioned the dress behind me. I just finished this today. I just bought the trim for it today. This is um, a monkey dress. Do <laughs> uh, you remember I did a monkey dress for myself and I said all my dresses are one of a kind, but she saw the dress and she really, really wanted it. And I had some more monkey fabric and I thought, well, I got to do something with it. So I agreed to make Lauren Smith a monkey dress. And my other monkey dress um, is, I might be selling that one too. So I might be all out of monkeys. So um, this one I did for Lauren Smith and I finished it today and I should show you, I'll have to pick up the tripod because I'm too lazy to take the camera out of it. I found this really cool trim. I went this morning looking for trim and look what I came up with. It's got little balls on it. I think it's adorable. And the color I think works really well. The colors, it's got this kind of rosy uh, burgundy. It's got kind of a sage green and a gold and kind of a taupe. Anyway, this combination worked really well I thought with this fabric. So I put it on the bodice and then I also trim the sleeves with it. Isn't that cute? And they they move. They they dangle. I liked those little balls. But um, I, I thought that I would have a really hard time finding um, trim for this dress. Um, the other dress I did, I put fringe on it. And it is upholstery uh, trim, but it's upholstery fabric. Um, but this this I thought was unique, and I didn't I didn't want to do a fringe trim, not particularly because I even though it's it's a monkey fabric, it's a little bit different color. I wanted to make the dress unique in some way. I didn't want it to be just like the other one. So um, I thought it was really really cute. Uh, so she liked it too. Uh, she really thought it was unique. So it is now done. The um, I will mention the petticoat is not. The fabric, uh, the gold lame is not what we originally had planned. It was originally a satin, but I tr made the petticoat, I made it twice. Uh, I just, it just draped too much. It wouldn't hold the pleats. It just, it looked all wrong. The color was better, I think, than this um, shiny gold, but the fabric itself just didn't work for what I was using it for. So we had to go to something else. And I just happened to be working on a gold lame dress for myself. I'm redoing one of my older dresses in a really cool 1950s style. So I happened to have a scrap of that fabric and I held it up. I thought, well, I guess that would work. And it's really pretty by itself. The, the petticoat on this is really, really pretty. And it would make a dress in itself with if, a, if it had a, a gold bodice. So she might later want to add a gold bodice to it. Um... Oh, thank you, Betty, on the front closing. Yeah, she wanted laces. Mine, mine meets in the middle and has hooks, but she wanted lacing because she wants it to be adjustable in case she gains or loses weight, um, that the dress will still fit. So I put laces in this one. Um, so yeah, that's why it's a little bit different there too. Now, the um, gold dress, you guys saw this last week. Hang on, I'm gonna move this one. So I'm also, uh, and I haven't had time to work on it until today, when I finished, when I finished Lauren's dress, I went back to this one, and all I did on this one yet is shorten the skirt. This was a floor length, actually more than floor length, it was dragging 
on the floor. I originally made this skirt really, really huge because I, I had a ginormous petticoat under it. It was a big ball gown. And I decided to make it T length when I decided to, to recut it and remake it into this beautiful 1950s halter dress. So today I cut oh probably eight inches off the skirt and I haven't hemmed it yet. So it's gonna be um, T length. I've got it pressed, but I have to still hem it. And you see, this has a petticoat that has no poof either. So Tina, here's, here's the crinoline and it just, it needs a lot more poof. I'm gonna figure out how to fix that. But that's what I have under it. And I think this is gonna be really gorgeous if I can get it to fit me. This is a vintage Vogue pattern. Um, it's a little bit small, I can tell. And right now, it, the fit, it isn't right. So I'm hoping I can make it to fit me. Uh, I'm gonna be working on that. I have a corset to do tonight and tomorrow. When I get the corset done, I'm hoping to get this dress done because I think it's gorgeous, darling. Uh, I really love the glamor of the 50s. I love the Elizabeth Taylor, Grace Kelly. Who else? What was another 50s icon? Um, Grace Kelly, Elizabeth Taylor, who else wore beautiful dresses? Those are two that come to mind. There was somebody else and I can't think who it was. Um, but yes, and Marilyn Monroe too. Yeah, this one does look a bit Marilyn. And um, so I, I really wanna go with that. And then um, when I'm done with this, I really, really want to do some um, 1930s. I really like 1930s. And I think that era will suit me, kind of the, the golden age of Hollywood, the very glamorous, you know, the, um, oh, way back then, that was Catherine Hepburn, uh, Lauren Bacall, Greta Garbo, you know, that, that era, the 30s into the 40s. Um, I really wanna do that. I, I've only done one dress from that era and I didn't really adopt the whole look. So um, I'm gonna try to do the whole look. So I'm gonna be practicing the hair and makeup uh, as I do this. But um, I want, you know, I want people to, yeah, Audrey Hepburn, yes, Lori, Audrey Hepburn. I think she was 50s too, but I think of her more 60s. I think of 60s, the glamour of the 60s, I always think of Audrey Hepburn. I know she was 50s also, but I always in my head, I associate this, the early 60s with Jackie Kennedy and Audrey Hepburn. Those are the two classic gorgeous looks. Um, so those are the two that I wanna emulate. Oh, I know there's a, there's a particular dress I wanna try to replicate because I've never seen anybody make it. I haven't, except there was like a Barbie doll made with it. But I love the red dress that Grace Kelly wore. It's a red lace dress in the movie Dial M for Murder. It's a gorgeous red lace, you know, the, the Dior wasp waist, big skirt um, dress. And I do have some red lace fabric. It looks a little heavier than what hers was made with, but I think it will work. So I wanna try to recreate that dress if I can. Um, so I've got a long list of projects that I really want to do. This one was half done. Like I said, the skirt was already made. I had a little bit of leftover material to cut the bodice and then um, I cut some more off the bottom today. But this will be very glamorous when I'm done. So, um, and I'm gonna get a chance to wear them. Hey, Sharon, love to see you. It's been a while, Sharon. Um, so let's see, uh, don't, I think I told you guys, um, there's some really, really great shows coming up. I live in uh, the Greenville, South Carolina area. I'm actually a little bit south of Greenville, but we have a really, really nice performing arts center in Greenville. It's called the Peace Center, P-E-A-C-E. -E. And um, they do, you know, Broadway type shows and uh, Greenville's a really nice town if y'all have never visited. It's, it's a small city. Um, it's not podunk at all. It's very, very, very nice. Has some top-notch restaurants and there's a lot to do in the city itself. It's very pretty and well laid out and it's very safe, very family friendly. Um, very, very nice place to visit 
if you've never been. Um, so anyway, they have a really good performing arts center. And this year, they just have some fabulous shows. So Hubby and I talked about it, and we're, we bought um, season tickets. We're going to everything. There's 11 different shows this year. There's some we didn't know a whole lot about, um, but it gives me an occasion to dress up. So um, I, I wore um, a um, 50s kind of style dress when we went to that concert. Um, was it just last week? Lori, was it last week or the week before? I'm already, already forgetting. She went also. Uh, John and I went to see two cellos in Greenville. And um, I wore a, you know, 50 style dress. It was all red. It had long sleeves and some red shoes and did the whole whole thing. And I'm not joking. I had at least a dozen people through the night say, oh, I love your dress. Oh, I love that look. You know, so it is something that, you know, people don't, people like. Most people like, uh, even though they might not do it. So if you guys want to do it, just do it. So anyway, um, yeah, uh, so we're going to have a lot of fun. Um, let's see, the, um, one of them is Aladdin, um, the, you know, the musical of Aladdin, wanted to see that. Um, what else? Uh, I'm trying to remember, there were so many, there were some really, really good ones. There were several musicals, uh. So anyway, uh, so a chance to get dressed up for that. And let's see, our anniversary is coming up in just a couple of weeks. And uh, we're going to Asheville again. Uh, Zena, if you're, I thought I saw you watching. Um, Zena's going to the Biltmore. Uh, let me see, is it just next weekend? Not, not this coming Saturday. She's going to come and visit me. But um, the Biltmore in Asheville is only about two hours, a little less than two hours from me. And um, we went last year for our anniversary and we're going again this year. Um, we're not staying at the Biltmore though. We're staying at the Grove Park Inn and that's coming up. Um, we're going the weekend of May 11th. Our, our anniversary is actually on the 7th. So it falls in the middle of the week this year. So we're gonna go up to Asheville. I've never stayed at the Grove Park Inn. It's, it's a really nice place also. So there's another chance to get dressed up a little bit. I, I like to get dressed up on our anniversary. You know, we usually go someplace really nice. He's good to me. Um, oh, Wicked. Lori, is Wicked coming? Um, I can't remember. I really wanted... Oh, Wicked, I think, is next year. Hang on a second. Hey, John? John? He can't hear me. Um... Wicked might, I can't remember if it was on the list for this year, but if you get the season tickets um, for this year, uh, you get first dibs on uh, next year also. Um, and I know Wicked was on the list, so I really, really want to see that one too. I've never seen it. Um, Teresa, heavyweight netting and add layers about six to eight inches from the waist. Start... Do you have, I need to see a diagram, Teresa. I'm, I'm, uh, start with 10 inch strip, then five, then you can make the strips gradually wider going down. What do I sew it to? Do I sew it? Do I, are you talking about making one from scratch or, um, adding strips to the one that I have? Do you have a diagram or anything? Um, cause I do, I do want to work on the petticoats cause they're, they're not, they're not poofy enough. Um, Let's see. Oh, oh, Teresa, your your message. Oh, I can add. Okay. Um, do you sew it on top of the uh, the strips you're talking about? Do I sew it to the crinoline or to the the slip of the petticoat? I'm not sure. I can't picture in my head how to do it. Oh, okay. Thank you, Teresa. Yeah, yeah. I definitely because I have some I have some netting. I have some stiff netting, so I could actually do it. Um, Diane, if I come to Greenville, um, oh, 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 I didn't see, um, uh, to see her, who, who, Diane, I missed your message here, I gotta go back. Uh, oh, when you lived in Austin, you bought season tickets, oh, I missed your message. Oh, your best, okay, there we go. My best friend who introduced me and hubby lives in Greenville. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, Diane, absolutely. Um, Greenville's awesome. You need to visit her. 
it's it's beautiful. It's a great town. Um, so yeah, if definitely if you come, I would meet you for lunch. That would be really fun. I would enjoy that. I don't have much of a social life. <laughs> This is my social life. Wednesday night at 8 o'clock is my social life. But um, actually, I'm going to work on that too. Uh, we've been in our house for about two years now. And I barely know any of my neighbors. I only know a couple of them to wave to. But some of them aren't really friendly. But we really haven't made any friends. Um, I haven't been socially active at all. I like, I know the people at the fabric store. You know, that's about, I'm serious, that's about it. I socialize with no one. So um, we were talking, you know, we went to church on Easter Sunday, and we used to go to church. We raised our kids in church, but we have not been members of a church for eight or nine years. It's We've moved around a lot, and we just, it just seemed like, oh, why bother? We're just going to be moving again anyway. And I don't know, we just didn't get plugged in, and there's no good excuse for it. But I decided after Easter Sunday that uh, we are going to try to get involved. Because the other thing is, I want my sons to meet some girls. My sons are in their 20s and neither of them has dated. And it's time for them to leave the nest. <laughs> Fly, little birdies. It's time for them to date and to meet some girls and to have their own lives. And my older son, Sean... Um, he just got a, a, a good job, and so he's working, and that was one of the things. He needed to have a job, and because um, he couldn't find a job after he graduated. And then my son Brandon went back to school because he couldn't find a job after he graduated. So both of them ha have been, you know, busy basically in school, and they're gamers. You know, that's what a lot of young guys do now, and they don't date. They don't know, but they don't know anybody. Um, you know, so they don't really socialize at school. Brandon doesn't. Um, and and the program that he's in is mostly older people anyway. He's uh, in, uh, he's got a bachelor's in biology, but he's in school now for medical lab technology. So he's planning to become a laboratory scientist. Um, so they're mostly older women. There's only one guy in this class. But anyway, my, my guys need to meet some girls. So we were thinking church is probably a really good place. So uh, we're, we're going to try a new church this weekend. There's one really close to us. I don't know if y'all have heard of it. It's one of those mega churches. It's New Spring Church. It is part of the Southern Baptist Convention, but I looked it up on the internet, and it's actually the second fastest growing church in the entire U.S. So they have a campus just 10 minutes away from us, so we're going to try it this weekend. It's real contemporary. I'm sure it's a lot younger crowd than we're used to. I'm used to the older churches and the old hymnals. And our favorite church that we went to, we were like, it was almost all older people. And they were so sweet. And they made the best church suppers, <laughs> the best potluck suppers these little old ladies could cook. It was really great. <laughs> but that was a long time ago. So now we we need to get plugged in and, and get socializing uh, with people. And, and my sons need to meet a girl, two girls. They each need to meet a girl. So we're working on that. I'm working on that. I mean, come on, they're, they're in their mid-20s now. It's time. And I haven't meddled, but I'm going to meddle now because it's time. <laughs> so... Um, I'm reading Diane, uh, get them interested in dating somehow church social events. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, cause m both of my boys, uh, they're really, really conservative. I mean, they don't drink, they don't smoke, they don't even cuss, you know, and, um, you know, they need a nice, a nice church girl. <laughs> so, uh, Lori, I've enjoyed getting back into church and meeting wonderful people. Yeah, it, it, it is a good place. And, you know, you have something in common. So um, I'm not, you know, there's good and bad. There's good and bad in, in every church. I'll be honest. Okay, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to tell you the real reason I dropped away from church. I told you it's been about eight or nine years. Guess how long I've been writing romance. I've been writing romance for about nine years. And when I published 
some really explicit books. I did. They're romances. They're great stories. You guys know what I write, most of you. At least I hope you do. And I write some steamy stories. And to be honest, I was afraid of judgment. I was afraid to go back to church because, especially a new church, the first thing people ask is, oh, what do you do? And at first I hemmed and hawed and, you know, I, I said, oh, I, I'm a writer. And I tried to avoid saying what I write. And then, you know, people would ask more probing questions and really put me on the spot. And I felt really defensive. And I really was, especially in a Baptist church, you know, and we're Baptists, you know, especially in a Baptist church. Uh, I think, you know, maybe people inside wouldn't really be shocked, but at least maybe they'd pretend to be shocked. I don't know. But it was uncomfortable. So I just didn't want to deal with that situation. So I just stopped going. And that was since I've been writing romance. I haven't gone to church. But now I've decided I'm going to go back. And, you know, if people ask me what I write, I will tell them. And I will just say, look, you know, I, I, I'll just have to ask them not to be judgmental. You know, what else can I do? Can you guys think of any way to deal with that? I mean, it's, it's a very personal, very sensitive subject for me. It's a difficult subject for me. So how would you deal with that? You know, how do you think is the best way to deal with it? Because, uh, you know, if I don't give my pen name, you know, they wouldn't know. But if somebody really wants to be nosy, they can find out my pen name easy enough. They can look at my books easy enough. It's easy, you know, but at the same time, I don't want to keep it a secret. I don't want to be like it's something I'm ashamed of. I'm not ashamed of it. I just didn't want to be judged. You know, um, it's, it's just a really uncomfortable feeling because, you know, everybody wants to be accepted. So anyway, that's, that's the truth. That is the honest to goodness truth. I just made my confession. Um, Stephanie, thank you. And that's how I looked at it. It's like, okay, you know what? As Stephanie said, writing is a gift from God, but it's also how you use it too. Um, but I looked at it that way because, you know, the first 44 years of my life, I didn't do anything creative. I was very scientific, very analytical. You guys wouldn't believe it. Um, I, w I worked in radiology. I was an assistant director of advanced medical imaging uh, when I left, you know, my field. Uh, so I'd worked my way up from radiologic technologist to CT to MRI. And then, you know, I taught. I taught a CT and MRI program. I was on the National Examination Board. I mean, I worked my way up and I did really, really well in my field. And um, I left it to write. So, you know, and that's what I thought. I thought, you know what, this this is what God wants me to do. I, I couldn't come up with any other reason, you know, and I think you just reach certain points in your life where things change and you take a chance or you don't. But, you know, I'm I'm a person open to taking chances. I want to know what's on the other side of the door. You know, I, I do. I, I, I want to learn. I want to grow. So, um, yes. So I, I do look at it that look at it that way. But um, so anyway, it's something that I've, I've kind of struggled with. Um, thank you, Lori. Um, it, Lori, uh, Stephanie says you're writing about love and not hate. And I think that makes a difference. I think so, too. And in my stories, yes, I write some steamy stuff, but in my stories, the relationship comes first. Um, it is very much about the romantic relationship. And so anyway, I try to develop that and make the story very realistic and build a strong relationship. Uh, but once we get to the steamy stuff, it's pretty steamy. I don't, I don't hold back. <laughs> But I, I, I wouldn't change any book that I've written. I really honestly wouldn't. So, um, Tina, I would just ignore because you're proud of what you do and have nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, I've seen a lot of hypocrisy. It's true. Yeah, people can be. That's why I said, you know, maybe on the inside they'd be like, ooh, I want to read that book. But on the outside it's like, oh, you wrote that? So, I don't know. So, I'm just going to have to find a way to deal with it this time because... I think it's the right thing for our family to get plugged in somewhere and, and to meet people and to make friends. And, oh, I didn't mention this. This particular church is very much about, again, I haven't visited there yet. We're going Sunday and I'll have to tell you about it. 
but they're very much about connecting people and they have all these different groups. You, you can go on their website and it says groups and there's groups of men who work out together. There's groups of people who go skeet shooting. There's groups of people. I mean, there's all these special interest groups within that church because there's so many people and they all have these little social groups. And, you know, my husband works out. He's in the best shape he's ever been in his life. And he's, he's going to be 57 and he's, he's looking good. <laughs> um, so, you know, maybe he'll want to join one of those men's fitness groups. But I, I looked at all the groups and I didn't see any sewing groups. So I thought maybe I would, maybe I'll start one, you know, and that would be a great way to get into, you know, get connected with people. But it have to be clothing. I'm not quilt. I'm a, I'm not a quilter. This is what I'm about. I'm not a quilter. <laughs> so um, I'm thinking that. I, I think that's something that a lot of people might be interested in. So if there isn't a group, I didn't see one, but if there isn't one, maybe I'll start one. You know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes on Sunday. So um, yeah, Diane, small groups are great. That's how you get to know people. And you know, if you have something in common, that's a starting point for friendships. So just like you guys, you know, what do we have in common? We have romance novels. We all love romance novels. And a lot and a lot of you guys like vintage and historical clothing. So here we are. So that's why we get together every Wednesday night and we do this little chat thing and have a good time and hang out together. So um, I think I think that would be a fun thing to do. And I think it's time. I, I, I'm feeling a bit isolated. You know, I've done it to myself. I have. And writers tend to be kind of that way anyhow. But, you know, I don't have any close family um, in the area. Actually, this is something personal, but my mom and I have a an estrangement. I'm not... I haven't seen or spoken to my mother in almost nine years. So that's been a real difficult family situation. Um, so, you know, when holidays come, it's just us. It's us and my mother-in-law lives with us. So, you know, uh, so we don't have extended family get togethers ever. Um, so it was a really big deal that my um, younger sister and I have started to connect again. And um, I posted a picture, um, her youngest daughter, we really, really hit it off. So um, she was here last weekend and I made her an Easter bonnet and I made her a little pink top and we just had a great time together. She's seven years old and she's she's a lot like me, this little tot. She's she's just such a, such a sweet little kid and she's so fun and she loves the dress up stuff. She loves it. So um, yeah. So we, we have a lot of fun together. And I don't have a little girl, so it's nice to have a niece. So anyway, um, yeah, uh, Diane, writers, yeah, it can be a lonely job. We do it to ourselves. Um, you know, everything's in our heads. And a lot of writers are, most writers are introverts, not all. But a lot of writers are extreme introverts. I mean, almost to the point of, you know, being you know, having a social phobia, um, a lot of writers, you know, cause it, we've just, you know, we just live in our heads so much. And, um, I have been like that. I used to be like that very, very much. And I've come out over time. Um, and especially since, you know, my interest shifted or expanded, shifted, ooh, um, I've become a lot more extroverted, but I'm an introvert at heart. I really, truly am. And I have to have my alone time. And, you know, we get together and we do, you know, whenever I get together with people in a social situation, I have to kind of psych myself up a little bit. And then afterwards, I'm like, oh, I'm so tired. I had a good time, but, oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> so, um, uh, thank you, Lori. Uh, Tina, I feel you there on the family issues. Ours are small issues compared to some, but it's nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's nice you're connecting with my sister. Yes, yeah. It, it, we really did have a good time. And my sister and I, when we were really young, were very, very, very close. I'm six years older than she is. Um, and then, um, well, I come from, here's more personal stuff, but 
I come from a family of five children. Uh, my parents divorced when I was seven, and my mother remarried. Um, my mom's been married six times, and it was it was really hard growing up. It really, really was hard growing up. And none of us lived at home. I don't think any of us lived at home beyond the age of 16. I left at 16. And um, my sister might have been even younger than that. So, yeah, we, you know, everybody's got a family story. But, you know, there were five kids in the family. I'm the second oldest. And none of us are really that close. We were when we were young, but we kind of all had to go out on our own and went in different directions. And, and uh, yeah, so, you know, we just, we aren't really close. Um, out of my siblings, I only stay in touch with two of them. So, anyway. Yeah, everybody's got, got their family stories, but it makes holidays, you know, kind of difficult, you know, because we don't do the expanded family stuff. Anyway, that's enough personal, personal stuff. So, anyway, um, here I am doing my rockabilly thing. As I told you, uh, I'll, I'm going to try some more outfits. Um, as far as projects go, I'm working on a corset tonight. And as I said, I'll try to finish this um, gold dress this weekend. And I will model it. I promise I'm going to model that gold dress. I can't wait to wear that gold dress. So um, I guess I'm going to wrap it up tonight. So um, thank you guys for hanging out with me. And thank you, Teresa, for uh, any um, links that you can send me on the um, petticoat because I do want to work on those petticoats. And I will chat with you all again next Wednesday. Love you guys. Good night.